Throughout the previous two videos, I was talking about structure. You remember, there can be a stark contrast between the muddy field work of research, even if in the library or on your computer, and the clarity of the presentation of the results. Academic writing can be creative, and structure may come last, but it has to be clear. This clarity should not only characterize the overall structure, but every single bit of it. Chapters, paragraphs, sentences, and even the choice of words. Every section, sentence, paragraph, chapter, should raise a question in the reader's mind, and the next section should answer this question by raising a new one, and so on. The finished text should be like a bright necklace, not made of unpolished diamonds, but of precisely cut brilliance, set in a clear order and forming a finished jewel. We discuss shortly the chapters. Paragraphs should be structured in the following way. The main information or idea comes first, and it is explained, argued for, and supported by the rest of the paragraph. I like shorter paragraphs as they facilitate reading. The more you will polish the form, the more you will also refine the content. Clear presentation presents clear thoughts. This also applies to your sentences. They should be short. I suggest no longer than four lines. The shorter the better. Don't be afraid of simplicity. Simplicity is an achievement. When it comes to the choice of words, try to be accurate and again clear. Please. Do not try to show how scholarly you are by sophisticated terms used in an unsophisticated way. The goal is to be understood, and the secondary goal may be to be entertaining and beautiful. There is even a tendency in scholarship that bans all entertainment and beauty as adverse to scholarly precision. I heavily disagree with that and aim to discuss this in a following video. Only those who really dominate a topic can talk about it in a simple, clear, but still accurate way, sometimes ornamented even with a hint of playful irony and self-irony. They don't need to prove how knowledgeable they are, so they are free to assist the intellectual venture, research of their audience. I think that, at its peak, scholarship becomes art, putting all seriousness between quotation marks and embracing the certainty of uncertainty. But art in academia is risky business. I can tell you that many reviewers don't like it and prefer to stick to strict scholarly formalism. Indeed, in academic writing, art should not go to the detriment of scholarship. What makes a text scholarly is thoroughness, clear logic, clear arguments, and clear support. This includes formal elements, such as proper annotation and bibliography. When it comes to annotation, bear in mind that the reader is your peer, who has to be given the opportunity to check your sources. In principle, you should give the source of every single piece of information you include into your text, with the exception of your own thoughts. It is essential that you make clear when you are quoting or following someone else's ideas and when you write those of your own. It helps the reader, shows respect to the scholars to whom you refer, and makes clear the merits of your own work. It is also good practice to thank everyone for ideas and information they gave you in person. Admitting what you owe them will not compromise your originality. It is a polite gesture. By taking ideas of others without mentioning them is rude. Don't forget, we scholars have nothing but erudition and ideas, so we can be incredibly jealous of them. Careful and consistent respect to the formal requirements shows your skills as a researcher and helps trust in the content of your study. The bibliography is also important for the same reasons. It helps fellow scholars and it shows the seriousness of your work. Believe me, scholars often evaluate a text 
by looking only at the bibliography. In the field of Arabic studies, there is another technical skill that is a marker of your erudition. It is the transliteration. That transliteration devalues research. Try to be very careful with such technical details by composing your text, and it needs to be thoroughly proofread and edited, ideally several times. After making the changes you thought they were final, take care and check everything again. And it is always immensely useful to ask others to read our work, for they will see mistakes they won't. For example, it is astonishing how often we find little mistakes on the very title page. This is my own book. And its title on the title page is a bit different from the rest of the text. I noticed this, of course, after its publication. I'd like to conclude this video by some questions that I plan to discuss in another one. The form shapes the content, supports it, but also confines it. What are the reasons for the tendency towards dry formalism in academia? What are the disadvantages this entails, not only in curtailing creativity in the presentation, but even in the core content of the research? How to fertilize barren and boring academic writing and thinking? How to revive the humanities by bringing back their humanity and adding life to them with recent findings and theories of the hard sciences rather than imitating their style? We should think together about these questions and join into the deliberations about the future of academic research, its directions, content and presentation. Thank you for your attention.